That growing pile of a hoarder's wet dream is 100 Lego sets, and I'm gonna build them all. And I'll do a few custom builds along the way. Disney princess books and bad spinning habits are pretty popular in this household, so getting the newest to complete the series was a no-brainer. Oh great, they made another one. If I had any real talent, I'd put these on something good to look at, but I don't, so cramming them on some circles and saying that they're landing platforms from Bespin and Utapau should work in faking skill. Lego friends being bad is cliche, this being no exception. Without instructions, I don't even know what to do here other than throw it in the keychain drawer. Coming out before the second extinction, of Bionicle, this set offered very little with real LEGO parts, but the spider mask taking over other creatures is pretty metal, so making a cave where it takes minifigures that are comparatively tiny to feed seems like an idea. Just don't look at the back. I like all sweaty nerds once, but cannot afford an army, so these with properly scaled minifigures will have to do. Instead of doing a played out half-assed Hothmok, I thought a factory assembly line might be better. Between the head claw and the super not Star Wars forklift, I was wrong. Just don't, it gets worse, just don't look at the back. I could do some neat transition showing the various Munchie Kid builds, or I could do another set and show the power of a brick separator by scalping the little Munchkey. The Looney Tunes could have had something going on, but it doesn't fit with the others, so the shelf will have to do. Clone Pilot's command center is rather sleek and would look great on the dark orange plains of Geonosis, or on a redundant tan ruins of not that. The Mandalorian warrior fits rather well with the Throne Duel. The Throne Duel, however, doesn't fit well on uh, my shelf. I thought doing a space background would be kind of boring. Copying a new set no one wants is slightly less, but I suck at building. And I don't even like these sets anyways. I'm gonna build a set without taking out of the bag. And I'm just showing off at this point. This buildable red brick would look great on my red brick shelf. Six spring-related parts packs seems like a good idea at first. I just don't know what to do with all the bird-sized eggs, or 12 bikes, or a fistful of helmets, or a juice store, or plants. Or, or more plants, or other plants, or more plants. There is a lot of crap in here, I think you get the point. Although, the June flavored pasta is a nice ad. This lightning round of third party custom sets ranges from weird business party favors, to suspiciously four plus shaped X-Wings, to the first and only ruler of San Francisco, Emperor Norton, who went bankrupt on a bad rice deal, resulting to claiming ownership of the United States. Even though he's far from the most famous crazy San Franciscan, I still gave him a stand. Munchie Kid is a surprisingly great Lego theme, despite only being affordable after selling a kidney. The miniature version of a mech makes for a solid normal mech pilot replacement. The scuba skeleton diving set would go along better with the C sets. We have a less fun copycat, two Siamese jet skis, a buzzkill jet ski, big fish, two fish, pirate fish, big fish, none of this rhymes fish, all comes together to form garbage. The idea was to make this with as few outside parts as possible in only 20 minutes. Despite not having a goal or anything in mind, I still managed to fail. And that takes real talent. Shredder without some sort of militia behind him is kind of like an MR production video without me. It's horrible. But six crane turret packs should dampen that suckiness. Now, even without the helmet, he still looks formidable. And the army of tiny teenage turtles should pose a little threat. I do have a question though. When you make your turns, do you put the legs on straight or at an angle? Because I personally build an unrelated Star Wars set so the crane can have a hallway for target practice only for the miniature mutants to unionize and make a super mech to raw dog the shredder. After getting rid of the mini dolls, this chest is neat. It's magic. It's a one trick pony. It's now boring me next. To celebrate the halfway point of 50 sets, I'm gonna build the world's largest poly bag, and I bet you didn't expect there was gonna be a cardboard ramp. Welcome to the world's first ramp Grand Prix. Our challengers and audience alike are wild with anticipation. With home field advantage, these weird things go first, and first place goes to what I think is a police cruiser. Skateboard convertible dad having a midlife crisis never stood a chance. Neither did any smart car ever. A professional go-kart, on the other hand, is, is still pretty sad. The driverless taxi achieves nothing. I'm no pro gamer, but I'm not sure how ripping your ATV in half will help. And oh my god, it doesn't! He goes right for the crowd! Having the most fun name to say in this entire video, the Schwim Wagon, Schwim Wagon, Schwim Wagon, Schwim Wagon, Schwim Wagon, oh, Schwim Wagon. A bulldozer doesn't seem like a real strong contender, given its purpose of not ra- And it takes the lead by a huge margin! Can a bumper cart do well? No, it can't. Maybe the cat- and also no. And the Munchkey driving the hover car never really had a better chance. You might have seen the Nesquik Bunny, but did you know that he had a car with annoyingly tiny stickers and a pullback motor? Instead of being a normal giant chocolate bunny, he's like a Quasimodo in a red gimp suit with creepy face still intact. And there he goes, crashing off into the side, all into the current lead. This mech tank half breed seems like it's gonna have an uphill battle here. Even though the mech can hold a minifigure, I don't think that'll help much, and it didn't. Finally, Gandalf, with his famous Mount Hogwarts, a magically charged failure. And with a last minute entry, we have Emperor Norton riding the entire entire city of San Francisco, leaving the bulldozer as the final winner. Hold on, something, something doesn't feel right here. Well, it looks like it floats to me. What are you waiting for? Just subscribe already. Jesus.
After attending the launch of Legoland Florida's newest attraction and receiving this brick, I want to do something better than the pirate treasure. boat ride. Treasure! 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 Oh. The bar was very low. I wanted to make it look like a poster, but with the treasure floating there, that would be a problem. I added a table with some additional treasure so it wouldn't be some randomly floating pile of coins. These sets are trash, so I'm going to speed run a garbage round and it'll go something like this. This butterfly looks like a bad airplane. It gets the bin. The flower isn't too bad. The rocket snail, tree cart monster, bug-eyed bunny, slug wagon, and trolls concert all make for s s something. And that something is the bin. The two sets of windmills and turbines are a mixed bag. I like turbines enough where I have a hill so I can add them to be with their family members, but the mills, not so much. Marvel's Eternals will remain eternally bad and in the bin. Once I was done building these birds and then building the Lego Duplo Duck in the bag, my enjoyment was over. And that was the same with this pencil holding pencil and the Mario supplement sets. Reading Unicorn, bin. Ugly Gray Cat, bin. Ugly Gray Cat, bin. Even at this tiny scale, the Speed Champion supercars look great, but next to a minifigure, it looks like a little tykes car. Adding a platform helps display and keeps kids away. These dot sets are supposed to make bunnies, but without instructions, I didn't do that. Instead, I made some painfully fuzzy dice. This is one of the few Lego ATRT walkers from Star Wars that isn't eight and a half stories too tall. So I thought I'd try something I haven't done before and make a freeform terrain display for it. I did the exact opposite for the Ackley and made a Felucia themed base for it. I picked the fungal planet over Geonosis or its home planet because being hunted by these things in Battlefront 2 left a lasting impression on me in a very terrifying way. I have all these little city booster packs that help bolster empty Lego streets, but that sounds boring, so first I'll dump the mini-doll parts in the body pile and get rid of all the extra builds by adding it to the plastic architect city, making it somewhat better. The dumpling stall will head over to the tiny munchy kid city, but did you see the size of that chicken's eye? Uh, I guess that actually is pretty realistic. And it's also kind of sad that a Lego minifigure has better fashion than I do. The Jurassic Park dino pin will get some quick additions, becoming a slightly larger dino pin, but the city doesn't stop here. This Duplo said I wanted specifically to use the pizza parts for signage with normal bricks. Duplo's Lego's toddler toy is double the size of an average brick. You can still use them with normal size bricks, but the connections can be a little bit tricky. To go along with this build, I'm also going to barely use these two Chinese themed parts packs. I used the Duplo wood piece for an awning and recreated a smaller version for the counter. I tried to use the same color scheme from the pizza shop for the door awning as well as the bottom of the counter. These Duplo bricks brick are completely smooth on the inside, but I didn't want to waste the space, so I wedged a ring underneath to fit a fridge perfectly. Just don't look in the upstairs, and I'll leave this with the dumpling shop. Finally, well after 24 hours, that was 100 Lego sets and 12 custom builds. And if you want another video like this, then go somewhere else because I've never built 100 sets before.